Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise for your word. Thank you for light. The eyes of our understanding, Lord, you will enlighten it by your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as we hear your word, it falls on the fertile place of our heart. And we are practitioners of your word. We are doers of your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and we give you praise for the opportunity to hear your word. In Jesus' name. Amen, church. Hallelujah. All right, so we've been dealing with system under test. I like my plane, if it's there, that's my private one. Uh, that's my private one. When I'm, when I'm finished here, I just enter and I go on holidays. Yes, they are just checking it out so that I don't fall down when I get into it. Amen. I believe in what I'm saying. I don't know if you do. You see, it would be unfortunate for my father to own the whole earth and live as a pauper on earth. <laughs> that is a disadvantage. If I claim that, that is the one that owns silver and gold and I walk around as a pauper, that is a slap on redemption. Somebody say, oh, you're preaching the prosperity gospel. But hey, I don't believe in that, but I believe in the prosperity that the scriptures talks about. The fact that those out there has abused the gospel does not mean we don't hold to the truth of it. Hey, Jesus. So, I, I want to just tell you something. God is, is throwing... You know, there is a Greek word called parabola, okay? That is to, it's, it's parable, okay? And it's to say, to throw something alongside something. As a cause of when we're praying, I saw God throw something to us. And I believe that God wants to make a deposit. God is throwing something to you this morning. And I pray that you will lay hold on what he's throwing to you. Are we together? Lay hold on what God is throwing to you. Because it's for your benefit. If you are here, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to just invite you for a, to a journey. I want you to, to open yourself up because what I'm going to share matters to you and matters to the household, especially of faith. Because we are a family, we're going to talk family talk. And if you've come in as a visitor or who don't know Jesus, just stay put. Because there is also an opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus. Amen. So, we're dealing, oh, where's my plane? Come on. I bought it with my own money. Hey. On a slide. So, the push of system and the test is all about two things. The reason why we've been sweating two, three, four weeks ago on this subject, system and the test, for me, is about two things. The, the reason why we sweat, and I know I'm going to sweat, so let me tell you. We sweat on these things is for two things. One, for, for you to know that you are not exempted from going through troubles, pain, challenges. You are not at all. Is for you to understand that because you are in this mortal body and because you are in this, on this planet earth, you will go through troubles. You will go through challenges. So don't be surprised if you are going through troubles. Not at all. For any believer to be surprised of going through trouble, that means you've not read the instruction. The instruction for your life when he gave birth to you, that is, gave birth to you, born again, I mean, he gave you an instruction or a book, and he says, you are going to go through pain and troubles. Yeah. 
David says, Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6, if I'm right, he says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Listen, church, there is something called shadow of what? Death. It's not pleasant. He said, yeah, though I, so you will walk through it. The thing is that we are not called to dwell in it. We are called to walk in it. To walk through the shadow of death. Yeah, though I walk through the shadow of war, death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But you see, if you are not intimate, I'll come to that. If you are not clinging, if you are not yielding, if you are playing games with church, if you are playing games with God, then when you are going through the shadow of death, you will be fearful. See, the fact that God was the shepherd of David didn't exempt him from going through the fire. You will walk in it. But you have to know that he is a good shepherd. He is. I say again and I repeat, this year is our year of opportune growth. God wants us to master growth that we will speak to any challenge and it will go. Or when the challenge comes, we are so much above the challenges, we don't allow it to bring us down. So first, is you are not exempted. You will go through it. The second is that God has given us all that it takes to overcome those challenges. So one, you are not exempted from going through pain and challenge and frustration and all that this word will bring to you. The difference between you and the unbeliever is that you have been given the provisions. You have been given the resource. You have been given what it takes to overcome all those challenges. So that is why we are dealing with system under test. Because it will come under test. If you are able to master the systems and the provisions God has handed over to you, then you can reign in this life. It is time for you to master the system, master the, 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 the resources God has given to you so you overcome those challenges. In First Samuel chapter 17, David and Goliath, David went to the field, he was... Um, he was sharing with us. He went to the field. Side, what was going on? He was a rejected guy. But David knew his God. See, I don't need to stand here to show anything. If what I am doing in my secret place is not with him, forget about what is going on here. See, David was so much with God when he was rejected in the desert. He was pushed aside even among his families. He was not even known. He was looking, he was looking after the sheep somewhere in the corner. But David was mastering the system of God. So a time came when he needed to face Goliath that saw clothes David with his armor. But David said, I can't use it. For I am not used to this system. I am not used to this armory. I am not used to it. So David couldn't walk in, that, in those 
whatever, ammo. He said, I am not used to it. Get it off me. I need to take that which I am used to to deal with that giant. Church, until you master the word and master the provisions and the system God has given to you, you will still remain on or remain defeated even though you are a Christian. Because Christianity is not a title. It's a lifestyle. So David said, get this off me. For one day, I was in the desert taking care of my sheep. And a bear came, a lion came, took one of my sheep. And I ran after the bear and ran after the lion, tore its mouth and took my sheep back. Mastering the strength that God has given to him. He said, I went after the bear. I went after the lion. Open his mouth and took my sheep back. In the secret place where nobody knew him. That is where lives happen. What are you doing in your secret place? No people that can engage on social media for hours. Facebook, flip, 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 flip. Instagram, flip, 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 flip. And what again? Don't pretend that you don't know. What is the day flip? <laughs> tick, tock, tock, tick, tick, tock, tock, tick. Snapchat. Pinterest. <laughs> now what do you call it? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> but... And hours, I'm talking about church. They pick the Bible and they are dozing. But they can sit on those stuff for hours. And then they'll be complaining that they are going through, they are going through stuff. What do you expect God to do? When he has given you this and you don't even care about the instruction of your life. You will become like them. And the Bible says that don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because God needs a renewal vessel to pass his power and solution through. Church. So two things. One, we are not exempted in the, uh, going through challenges. Two, we have been given the resources and the system that we need to use. But we need to master it. We need to. Cassandra, I want to be very bold and go to the edge and speak to you. And church, I want you to agree with me. This nation must hear of this lady. It's a prophecy to you. I believe with all my heart that for what you do, this nation must hear of you. And the nations beyond. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for you, Cassandra, that no restriction, no limitation will be able to box you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every provision you need, every link you need, every connection you need, every favor you need is released on you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that in the years to come, you remember these words of the Lord, that the nations are calling for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Nations will hear you. Nations 
will bow before you. For that which God has put in you and placed in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. It's not ended. I'm praying for you. it must come to pass. Church, let's pray for him. You see, listen, I know believers and Christians that will say, I'm praying for you. They don't. I know it. I've been in the faith for a while. They say, oh, we're praying for you. Mm -mm. They are doing nothing. You better pray for yourself. They are not. See, so I am very careful because I am, I am conscious of my words. Very when I say something, I want to stick to it. Even if it costs me to pain, I, I must do it. It's called integrity. So for me to say, I'm praying for you, I must. Because I'll give account of every word that come out of my mouth. So two things, I think we've settled that. Now let's go into the systems. Yeah, last week we started with some system, faith, system of faith. Or we talk about system of intimacy. We talk about system of um, praise. And we talk about the system of, I didn't get there. System of um, consistency, I didn't say it, but that was in my note. System of consistency and persistency. I was in my bed um, Monday, I told the, the leaders, Monday morning on my bed, I felt God walk into my bedroom and tap me and said, touch on system of service. So that will be the last one. I hope I get there. If you don't get anything, you must get the system of service. All right, let's go. Are we there? Um, Athea. So he says in John chapter 16, verse 33, he says that, I have told you these things so that in me, you will have perfect peace. In me, you will have perfect peace and confidence. In the word, you will have tribulations, as we've said, and distress, frustration. But be of a good cheer, take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of its power to harm you and to conquer you. No, that is the last one. I don't need one this one. I'm at here, please. Can you go to um, that, that scripture? Let's go to John chapter 16. Do you have it? If not, we'll, we'll just proceed. No worries. It's not easy to be sitting there for everybody. Is. <laughs> All right. So there you go. In me, you may have. You will have the perfect peace in me. If only you stay in the boundary of in me. If you go outside the boundary, forget. If you go outside the boundary, a serpent will bite you. That is the devil. And God can't do anything. You stay in the boundaries. So if you don't know what is written, you will not know the boundaries. So it's very important that you understand in him. So when you are in him, you do that. And then we define system, just rushing through because we've done all this. System, we said, is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done or organized scheme or method. And we said Jesus himself had a system. In Luke, he says, as his custom is. As his custom is. So what are your system? As his custom is. When he was 12 years, I said, he sat, he asked, and he listened. Until you sit, ask, and listen, you can grow. That is the pathway of growth. Sit, listen, ask. Engage your mind. Engage your spirit. That is where growth comes. Do you know people will go do all manner of degrees, masters, and know about things, but they don't even have time to know about their God. I'm not saying go on a theological study, but you see, you don't need to go to a theological school to know your God. 
It's good to go to a theolo- I've been there. It's very good. Very good. I thought when I go to the theological school, I finish my degree, I will know all the answers. It didn't happen. I came out confused and I went in. It had to settle that because what they were saying, they don't even know what they are talking about. Professors who don't even, they know this. They don't know this behind this. They don't know the spirit behind the book. So going to school does not school you. You give yourself to it. So let's go to system of faith, okay? In, I said there is no other life the believer in Christ has but the life of faith. There is no other life you have but the life of faith. When you don't give yourself to the life of faith, you are not really living, you are existing. Because you are only called to live the life of faith. Galatians, he says that Paul is saying, he says that I am, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Okay? And he says, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, the life that which I, I now live in the flesh is lived by the faith of the Son of God. Other translation says, by the faith in God. Wrong translation. It is, the original Greek is, the faith of God. And in the faith of God, we put our faith in God. Let me repeat again. The faith of God, he gave it to you, so you use the faith he gave to you to put in him. So he's not saying, the life that I live now is, the, is my faith in Christ. That is, NIV and other translation says that. The original says that the faith of the Son of God. If you don't have the faith of the Son of God, you can't have faith in Him because you, you cannot. That is what the people of old were trying to do. In Romans, it says that He's given us the measure. Again, other translation says a measure. Wrong. It's the measure. By reason of the measure He's given to me, I put out of that measure, the measure, I put a measure. So the measure you have, you can, you can produce a measure of faith. Am I making sense? That is why we have weak faith, little faith, great faith, strong faith, consistent faith, and all those stuff. God has not given you all those faith. God has given you all the faith you need, but you can bring out a measure of the faith that can be weak, that can be strong, that can be what? Great. So you sit here, you don't have great faith, you don't have great faith, weak faith or anything. You have the faith of Christ. I will teach on that as the time goes on, but not today. Just to just say something. Wait your appetite. So you've been given the faith of God. And the faith of God is all you need to live your life. And listen, the faith of God thrives on the word of God. If you don't get the word of God into you, the faith of God will be there, but you'll not be thriving in faith. That is why we give ourselves to the word. The Proverbs of the 4 verse Verse 20 to 23, he says that, incline your ears to my saying. Incline, consciously, give yourself to my word. In it is life. So that is the faith that we're talking about. Let's go to Habakkuk chapter, or let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So that is why I said, that is not your faith, it's his faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And the truth is this, people. What grace has not made available, faith cannot produce. I heard people say, God is moved by our faith. Wrong. God is moved by his grace and love for you. You move yourself by faith 
or appropriate the grace by faith. While we were yet sinners, Romans chapter 8, he died for us. Not your faith. By his compassion towards you. By his grace. So what grace has not made possible, faith can produce. I'm looking very skeptical. What grace has not made possible, Faith cannot make it happen. So, if grace has not made healing possible, forget your faith can't make it possible. And the truth is that grace has made healing possible. That is why he says Ephesians chapter 2, 6 to 8, verse 8 especially, he says that by grace are ye saved through faith, not the other way around. By grace are ye saved through the demonstration of his faith in you. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse, verse 4. Um, Atiyah, it's not there, so don't worry yourself. I want the people to open their Bibles. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just, the just shall live by faith. The just, how many just are here? You have no option but to live your life by faith. And the experiences around you is the level of your faith at work. The experiences does not validate your faith, your faith Validate the experiences. All right. Some people are still looking for Habakkuk. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up to you and your God. <laughs> Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. Are we there? But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. Oh, there we go. That one. The righteous shall live by faith. So your whole life is faith. And God has given you the faith. You need to get connected with his word to live it. All right. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 20, 38. See, your time is coming. We, we're going to go scripture upon scriptures. You know, because that is why we are here. So for you to be here and not have a Bible, it's, it marvels me. Because... You came to church, and one of the major things we do in church is to open Bible to study, to read. I have said that in the book of Acts, where the church was birthed, there was nothing like Bible school. The church, the gathering, was Bible school. Why would they open scripture upon scripture and learn? Now, we don't want to learn. We are just microwave believers. Feed me, tell me, and, and let me go. No. It's time for us to put our head in this. Bend the candle to study. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says that study to show yourself approved. Be diligent to show yourself approved. Unto God, not approved by God because you are already approved by Him. But you have to study to show yourself approved unto Him. A workman who needed not to be ashamed by rightly, or totomio in the Greek, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, if you don't, if you, are, if you are not at that stage, life will put shame on you. You must come to a place where you are rightly dividing the word of truth. Where you, 
you, you too much know the character of God. It doesn't matter the circumstance or anything. You know my Redeemer liveth. Where am I? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. It says that, let me just quote it here. Yes, it says that, what does it say? The righteous one shall live by faith. Okay. You got enough of those scriptures, do you? No pleasure. So, your faith is very important. His faith in you, very important. When you give yourself to the word of God, and to like-minded people, you grow. Listen, you don't grow faith. You grow your mind to agree with the faith in you. Mm -mm. Faith cannot be grown. The same faith you have will be the same you have in heaven. No, nothing has changed because his faith is given to you. You grow your mind. You master the things of the spirit. Here, everything is here. You master this to come in alignment with your spirit. Okay. Let's go to the system of intimacy. System of intimacy. System of intimacy. You see, when you are intimate with the Father, you know things that ordinary people don't know. When I'm intimate with God, I come out and say things people don't know. That is why we can be same Christians or you can have a Christian friend, but you are, he or she is different from you by reason of intimacy. God is not a partial God. He's not a partial God at all. He's not a respecter of persons. But to anyone that believes in him, he makes his path known to him. Psalm 25, he says that, the secret of the Lord, Psalm 25 verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The word secret, secret sorry, in the Hebrew is intimacy. And in intimacy, God shows you what people don't know and that will make you a master of life. It's called intimacy. See, how intimate are you with the Father? When, when have you decided to make time with the Father? Make time with Him. Oh, only you, Lord. Only you. A table of two. <laughs> only you, Lord. Intimacy. And I said earlier, when you are intimate with your wife or your husband, you know what happens. There we go. Life comes out. Life comes out. I can't share or Rob cannot share his secret with me until I get a bit closer. The closer you are with God, the better it is. That is where Paul can make some statement. He said, for me to die is gain. For me to live is Christ. It's a person who was intimate with him. See, we, I quoted Psalm 23. And we quote the scripture and we said, the Lord is my shepherd. No. The person who wrote the Lord is my shepherd, there was a reason why he said the Lord is my shepherd. There was a system he was following, and therefore he said, the Lord is my shepherd. It's called intimacy. In the dark places where nobody was around, where his sheep were, um, lions and bears were coming after his sheep, his intimacy with the Lord bail him out. So stop quoting scriptures. Start doing what he says, and then you can quote it. We all say, the Lord shall supply all my needs according to my, your riches. Do you know the reason why Paul said that? Because they gave. And as a reason of giving, he said, the Lord will supply all your needs according to. There is a reason why scriptures are written. 
Don't just quote them. Be them first and quote them. System of intimacy. On the system of intimacy, I want to touch on prayer and fasting. I said, prayer and fasting is not a rescue system. That you only pray and fast when you are in trouble. No. Prayer and fasting is a lifestyle. It's an intimate. You go a day without food with him. Why is it that without food? Because you can concentrate more on him. A believer who cannot tame his flesh is not matured enough. Read scriptures. If you are not able to tame your tongue, tame your flesh, you've not grown yet. A believer who can tell his body, today you are not eating. I'm in charge here. You are not eating, body. <laughs> and then you go all alone by yourself with the Lord. It's a lifestyle. At least I fast every once a day. Every no one let it, sorry. Once a week. At least. It's a lifestyle. That is intimacy. Because when you abstain from all, see, first of all, fasting is abstaining from food, then the other things. Not abstaining from other things and eating. No, that is not scripture. Scripture says abstain from food and then the other things. I was lecturing in a Bible school in Denmark and the student in, in group, they were said they were going to fast and one of the guys were in the line to go get food. And one of the, the, uh, the leaders said, oh, we are fasting, don't you know? Oh yeah, I'm fasting. I'm fasting from Facebook, but I, I need to eat. <laughs> I was just, but what I'm saying is that Facebook and all those things, you must fast from, but first of all, you say fast from food. All right. So fasting and prayer, you get into it. You don't need to be told to fast before you fast as a believer. No. In Matthew chapter 6, he says that 6 to 7, he says, when you fast. He didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast and when you pray. When you pray. So prayer should be your lifestyle. Intimacy, church. Intimacy. Remember, we're dealing with systems. What is your system? Is your system, I only pray when I need help. Or is your system, I'm praying without ceasing. The lifestyle of Jesus, I don't have time to go through all the scriptures, but the lifestyle of Jesus was a prayer lifestyle. He prays always. And then he will come on the scene, and then things will be happening. And somebody will think, oh, I can do the same. Remember, in the book of Acts, the sons of Sceva were whipped by a demon because they saw Paul and Jesus did miracles and said, in Jesus' name, um, the Jesus, they preach, go. And the demon pounced on them, whipped them, got them naked. It's intimacy, church. I'm provoking you, I'm provoking myself. Enough of pampering. It will be okay. It will be okay. Get up! Get up! Get up! I know it will be okay. But it has been okay 2,000 years ago. Until you, you yield to the okay 2,000 years ago on the cross, nothing happens. You be sit down and say, it will be okay, it will be okay. I'll come to consistency and persistency. And I'll touch on that, what I need to touch on. But now, let's proceed. Are we being blessed, church? He says, pray without ceasing. You see, Martin Luther King said, to be a Christian without prayer is no possible than to live a life without breathing. It's no possible. So, the Christian life is a praying life. You don't pray because you are gifted to pray. Forget about it. Prayer is, is communication. I talk with my God. You don't need to be gifted to talk to your wife or talk to your... No, that's not a gift. It's a relationship. Talk to him. He says, Jeremiah chapter 3, no, 33 verse 3. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great things that you don't know. Is this Bible true? I will show you great things that you don't know. You are too ordinary. 
When you call on God, he makes you an extraordinary in your ordinariness. Call on to me and I will show you. Are you calling on him? And this calling is not once a while calling. It's a consistent calling. It's intimacy. Lord, what are you saying concerning my family? Lord, what are you saying concerning my kids? I've been vulnerable here. I've got a bit um, worried about my own. I'm raising them. I said, oh, Lord. And God said, you're doing good, Kobe. You're doing good. I need that. I need, I need that, that affirmation. Because sometimes you, th you think you're not doing well. When you look at how you're raising your kids and how they are everywhere, and you think you're not doing well. I came also to tell you, you're doing good. You're doing good. The call on me, call. God, yes, want to hear some calls from you. How often are you calling? How often are you calling? Church, it's time for us to call. COVID hit. And when you call on prayer, you call, it was all over. Yeah? And then they'll be calling prayer meeting. Let's pray. I think God will be sitting and laughing. I needed you to call before anything hit. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. He says that, Finally, my brethren, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In verse 11, he says that. So that. Or he says, put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to withstand the evil days. So, put on. You don't put on and put off. I put it on and I increase my fire. So when the evil days come, I can handle it. Proverbs says, if you fail in the days of your adversity, then your strength is weak. Not the adversity. God wants us to call. God wants us to be intimate with him. God wants us to... Make it our daily life. It's not for pastors. It's not for leaders. It's not for elders. It's not for, before they all became those I've mentioned, they were all, they are all Christians. So the study of the word is not for me because I, I, can, I want to come and preach here. No. I don't study the scriptures for you. First of all, I study the scripture for me. And then I can give it to you. <laughs> He said to me last week, he said, copy, if I'm able to, God speaking to me, he says, if I'm able to get the word into you, I can bring it out to be a blessing to people. If I'm able to get it into you. So, I said, God, do it. I give him the platform to do it. I give myself to the word. All right, let's, let's move on to the system of praise. System of praise. Psalm 149. Let's go there, please. System of praise. We don't praise God because we got it all figured out. Luke chapter 10, verse 21. He says, And Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and gave praise to God. Jesus rejoiced. Let me just show you how he did. The Greek word of rejoice in the Spirit means he jumped, spin out, and shouted. That is what Jesus did in the grave. So, so when we are running and shouting and giving God praise, it's not because we are weird. In fact, you are weird for not even engaging what Jesus did. People think we are crazy. People are shameful to dance in the, and move. Yeah. This is for kids. You don't dance like kids. Go ask David. It's an African thing. No, no, it's a godly thing. It's heartfelt praise. It's not entertainment praise. No. I'm praising God here. And the same thing I will do here is the same thing I do in my closet. Look at me when I'm cooking, when I know what I'm cooking in my kitchen. I do my thing. My Emanuela came to me, Daddy, what are you doing? I'm praising my God. 
The first three months we came to this country was the hardest month I've ever experienced, or we as a family has experienced. But God is my witness. His praise was always on my tongue. His praise was always on my tongue. I cried, but I was praising. Not because I got everything fixed. No. Ask Tina. She wanted to escape. <laughs> what, are you do- what are we doing here in this country? So God brought us here for a reason. We're not done yet. I'll praise him. I, I dance in the, in, the, in, 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 the, in the middle of challenges. It's, it, see, the wisdom of the world or the wisdom of God sometimes is like the foolishness of the world. It's time to be foolish for God and see what God will do in your life. All right, because of time, we're not going to read scripture. My, my intention today was to go scripture and scripture, but the, way, but the way you are pulling the thing out of me, I can't go scripture upon scripture. And our lead elder is saying, next week, next week I'm taking my plane and I'm off. Did you see my plane? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the system. We talk about the system of praise. Let's go to Habakkuk, okay? Read Habakkuk and see that thing. Habakkuk chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. It says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit on the vines, though the labor of the olives may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may cut off from the fold, and there be no head in the store, yet, yet, verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, my God. I will rejoice in the Lord, my God. Things are not going on well. I am sick. No money. My kids are here. They are not born again. This, that, that. Yet, I will rejoice in my God. Yes, I will. So it's a will that the prophet is putting in there. I am taking my will under control to praise him. That's the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is coming from here. Joy is as as a result of happenings. I don't live my life according to happenings. I make them happen. All right, let's go. And then, verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the feet. He will make my feet like deer's feet. If you go home, Google the feet of a deer. What it does, what it is made to do, it can go on rocky stuff. It's as if they are falling, but they are strong. They will be climbing. Google it, you see it. It's beautiful. That is God, our architect. He says that, and we will make, and he will make you walk in high places. Praise makes you walk in your high places when it is heartfelt, not just mouth felt, heart felt. All right, let's move on to the system of consistency and persistency. See, we are good in starting things. Scripture says that better is the end of a thing than the beginning. The devil is not afraid of what you start. He's more afraid of looking at your end. Remember, he's been in this game for years. He came to still kill and destroy. Very consistent in what he does. Believers are not. We start something and we, and we got a bit of hate. And then, oh God, why me? Why not you? Somebody, I heard somebody say, um, I've prayed about this for years. It's not happening, so I'm giving up. Oh, the devil got you then. Yes, the devil got you. Because in you, God has put in the spirit of persistency and consistency. You see, the difference between consistency and persistency is this. Consistency is for doing things repeatedly. It can lead you to, to um, many years or things not happening. Consistency is good. But a time, a time comes where you need to persist. You, you, you push through. That's what Jesus did. He was consistent in his prayer. And then, I think in the, in the, in the Garden of Eden. Is it Garden of Eden? No way. Gethsemane. Wow. Eden, Gethsemane. All right. He came, he was consistent. Came to talk to his disciples. Can you help me? 
And Jesus said, even his helpers are sleeping. He went back, persisted, and he broke through. Don't stop there. It's time to add persistency to your consistency. Persist, press. As far and as long as this book has said it, it will happen. It doesn't matter how long it takes. That's, there's a quote I put there. It says, Godly persistence always wins over any form of resistance. It always. It doesn't matter how long it takes. My mother was an alcoholic. It took 10 years for our prayer to break through, for her to be set free now. 10 years. But we did. 10 years. Some take more, but we, are, we persist. As long as God has said it, he will do it. And I keep, I keep at it. Let's end up with a system of service. System of service. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. It said, as the Son of Man came to serve, but not to be served. The Son of Man came to serve, but not to be served. Church, until we come to a place of service, we cannot really see God at work. Because everybody wants to be boss. Everyone, everybody wants to say, do this, do it. Nobody wants to serve. Jesus came down to serve, but not to be served. And remember, there's a scripture, because of time, I'll paraphrase in, in um, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 12 downwards. There is, we are a body with many members. Every member serves the body. So if this hand is not serving this body, it has no use. God has placed this hand to serve my body. All right? My challenge to us, because the service there he's talking about is practical service in the grave. What is your service in this house? This house called liberty is an extension of the household of faith of God. God has placed you here to serve here. Okay, so my question for you and for us is what are you serving with? What are you doing in church? Are you just warming this one? Or you are engaged in service? I want you to take this to heart and ask God, what, what can I do in this house to serve? One day, many, many years ago in Ghana, in, in, in our church, we meet in a school building. And it was dirty. And it was time for prayer meeting. I went there. I went there. And it was very dirty. Very dirty. What I saw was an opportunity to clean God's house. Because that is where we say it's God's house we meet. I cleaned the place neatly. I was sweating like a pregnant fish. <laughs> Amen. Have you seen a pregnant fish sweating before? No, my time is up. <laughs> I clean everything. See, people listen to my heart. When I use myself to give example, it's not because I want to show up or show anything. No, I'm the only person I know that I've done. So I... It's good. I will give here, but I also have to give here. All right. I swept the place, sweating, went to the field to get to fresh air. When the, when the church started, this guy came in, said, Copy, did you see all the mess that were here? I said, yes. I, said, I, said, I was happy. I said, yes, I saw it. I said, that was an opportunity for me to clean God's house. He said, I saw it, but it was really dirty, and I went away for people to come and clean up. I said, Wow. And the Lord said to me, as you've cleaned my house, so I've cleaned your destiny. Church, service in the house of God, you don't know what it's doing for you. It looked nice to come in, receive, and go. But there is something behind the rear deal. So put your hands in the mat and serve as if you are serving God. That is where it is. Again, my challenge to all of us, if you are not doing anything in the church, it's time for you to reconsider and get in. 
They have not told me to say this. So don't say, oh, they want us to work here. That's why. No, forget about it. I hear God. Small. I hear God. He walked into, I felt he walked into my room. I was laying in the bed. And he touched me and said, I want you to present this. The system of service. I said, if you don't take anything, pick the system of service. Get engaged in doing something in this house. Do something. Find something to do and do it for, the, for his glory. Amen. 